Hey, you guys, how you doing? In my part of the world, part of me at the moment, we are dealing with cold weather. So while you've got your air conditioning and fans going as you do your videos, I'm the other way around. I have to have the heater near me. I've got one of those little um, foot heaters where it warms you up by blowing hot air. But yeah, I'm finding it a little bit difficult adjusting to the colder part of the year. I'm not a very good person when it comes to cold. I'm always freezing. It's always been like that all my life. Yeah, I don't know. Generally speaking, I'm not very well built for the cold, I don't think. But um, yeah, oh my gosh. Gosh, guys, it's so hard to stay current with this subject. And um, I honestly had no intentions of doing so. I can't emphasize that enough. I wasn't going to do a video every time I say there's nothing further to add to the foodie beauty story because I've seen it all and I've pretty much expressed everything I wanted to say. Here we go into another area of her journey where, oh man, I'm finding it so hard to keep back my words. And what can I say after all, everybody else has voiced it so well and pretty um, analytically. But yeah, let me just add my two cents worth here because watching her streams yesterday, I got so friggin' beyond frustrated. I felt genuinely embarrassed for her, but also cringe factor. As I was watching it, I felt so uncomfortable calling a guy from a spare phone that you have, that number he doesn't know of, um, just so he will answer because you're thinking he's avoiding you in your regular number. Only after a couple of weeks of knowing him, what are you going to possibly say? Hey, I know you don't want to speak to me, so I thought I'd use an incognito number, a number you didn't recognize, so that I will force you to hear me out. Because truly, I think it's not even fully three weeks that she's been seeing this guy, despite her calling it three weeks. I think we're going on to the third week now. So even if it was three, four weeks, it's not enough time for her to have the demands and expectations Really, any time is not appropriate for you to have any emotional demands on the other side. You can't force someone to be in love with you, to have feelings for you. Even if you go in a situation explaining to each other that a relationship is what you're looking for, if one person is not feeling it, you can't force them into it, right? These things come naturally, let alone if you go into a Tinder hookup with the understanding it's going to be a casual thing. Um, Yeah, like... You have sex with a person on your first meeting. It's in a house you don't know, in an environment you don't know. You do some substances together. Um, it's pretty full on. There's a clear indication that since you're using a hookup app anyway, that the tone of the whole thing is a sexually oriented encounter or exchange whatever you're going to have with each other. I have discussed in a previous video that these people have got a very unhealthy codependency on one another. Um, the Egyptian guy, because he's a control freak in my understanding, in all of our understanding, I think most of us would agree when we say that, um, yeah, this guy is a controlling kind of character who likes to have power over people and um, some of the youtubers even have suggested that he is engaging in um, kind of games that will lead to him having the upper hand and stringing her along more luring him luring her into the mind control sort of thing um, further by pulling back and not answering straight away when she's calling and other tactics that he has done so far it's important to say though that not one sort of um identifying pattern fits everybody not everyone is the same within um cycles of abuse and abusers themselves not everybody is identical even if they've got similar sort of personality traits but there are general indicators that are in common and yes definitely they will try to keep you hanging on and become more and more dependent on them so they play it hot and cold and um, they shower you with attention then they might play a little game where they disappear for some hours 
When I say a few hours, please let me explain. Nobody owes you 24-7 reports around the clock and nor should you expect to know where they are every waking and sleeping moment of the life. That's just beyond even comprehensible. It's, it's, that's just insane. You know, you, you're the one with the issue if that's what you want. What I had in mind more is if you've made plans with a person, you've, you know, organized for you to cook something special in your place. And instead of rocking up at the appropriate time, they leave you waiting for hours upon hours and they rock up at your place 4am, totally drunk or something like that. This is just completely wrong and rude. That's just showing you lack of consideration and disrespect. But Chantelle didn't exactly have, um, make those kind of plans. She had been seeing the guy every day since she started seeing him and something turned up. He had an opportunity to hang with friends or others or he just needed time out. It doesn't really matter. I think he's entitled to that and anybody would be after you've been every night with a person. I'd like to apologize. I filmed this after I recorded the rest of the video and I did notice that I had lipstick on my teeth in the previous and uh, sections to follow so apologies in advance um yeah anyway about mind controlling games and people when i was starting out in life and my early relationships my second actually um experience my ex did that he would let me wait for hours unannounced without warning me that he couldn't come or that he would be late and it was almost as if he was punishing me I don't even want to call him ex when I think of him, even though I was with him for a few years. It just makes me feel sick and to imagine that I was um, subjecting myself to that kind of treatment. And that pretty much set the standard for the rest of my life. Uh, the first two relationships I had were very dysfunctional. The first one, because he had issues, um, his past was very troubled and he came from a very... Um, complicated um, kind of part of the world where he had lived through wars and dictatorships and all sorts of things and we were both very immature the second one being this horrible abusive controlling man and yeah he was ugh, the most disgusting chapter of my life um, and I've also uh, explained in a previous video that because I only knew long-term relationships in my journey thus far, I was very emotionally immature. The only standard I had was the monogamy or at least on my part, um, the commitment of a relationship and what I viewed as the safety of one as well, the validation of one where you are acknowledging the other person's qualities and you want to be in a um, sort of committed situation with them. So that's all I knew. I didn't date people short term. I didn't really do one night stands. I might have had the odd experience with um, a guy that was very fleeting, like one or something like that. And so coming out of one of my most recent situations, which was uh, a 10 year relationship. Yeah, that was, I was very uh, emotionally and mentally immature when it came to romantic relations, whatever you want to call them. Um, so what I wanted to uh, highlight is people say, oh, at 37 years old, she's still not mature enough and doesn't know what she's doing. It doesn't really matter because if she hasn't had life experience, especially within a particular situation, how is she supposed to have developed and matured and learned from it? I will say a couple of things now that a couple of days have gone past since the big dramatic events of um, Chantelle <laughs> the other night and her world, how uh, Egyptian guy said to her, I yeah, I want to see my friends tonight. And she just totally freaked out because as she said, she wants to be with him as much as she can. And admittedly, 24 seven, if she can, to the point where everything else takes secondary place. We already know that in her life, her health, her cats. I know she's um, always had to pretty much groom them <coughs> and shave part of the hair off. But the other day, she had to remove big chunks of Sam's uh, hair near his towel on his back. 
because he was so matted. Like, chunks. Did you see how much she had to shave off? Because she's not there to comb them every day anymore. And because her mind is constantly on this Egyptian druggy pits, anything else is not as important. She, It's like she's hanging off Egyptian man for every moment of her life to be to have meaning and happiness. She has attached the value of complete existence, happiness and meaning um, to her world on Egyptian guy. And that's so bad. That shows definitely emotional immaturity. And it doesn't matter if she's 37. Here's the part that I disagree with people. Someone can be 47 and if they don't have life experience, how they're going to have to have developed into knowledgeable human beings it's not something that is installed in your brain brain automatically it's not software update you know so you have to have had a few relationships a few short-term situations so you can develop from that you can't just all of a sudden become wiser with age that's not how it works so even though Beauty Beauty reassures us that she's had a lot of adventures romantically, sexually, and with the opposite gender. I don't know if, if that's entirely true because, look, it certainly did seem to, to me the other day that she was embellishing when she was um, upset over Egyptian guy uh, not responding to her text. Two and a half hours had gone by. She was freaking out. How dare he? How dare he disrespect me? That seat we're breaking up. I believe that she was very upset. I believe that she's that insecure. So as, as soon as a person is not paying attention to her, someone she's interested in, she loses it. I really do believe that. But I also do think she was exaggerating her upset. You could see when she left um, the Egyptian guy's house and she was streaming from the road that it was it reminded me a little bit of Nikocada Avocado who exaggerates about uh, you know I broke up with my husband now he's bad he's got a boyfriend I cheated on him I'm upset so I'm eating my feelings all of that it is so obviously overdone and over the top but with Nikocado when he cries he actually really cries he's so easy to make himself tear up and for that I think he's a good actor um but um Foodie Beauty I think was a little bit more obvious in her forcing the feeling on to make it look as if she was more upset than what she really was um yes yeah, she was besides herself but she wanted to bring herself to tears so she can generate bigger um shock value uh more interest in her more people to make videos about her to really bring attention to her a channel and earn a few more dollars. It really seems that the focus of the day for Foodie Beauty is the uh, monetary aspect. I don't doubt it that other times it was too. But now you can see that she's done the paid subscriptions. She's doing cameos. She's considering OnlyFans again. Uh, there's a strong focus on money all of a sudden and even a fool would realize that something is going on to make it very imperative for her to generate more income so um, I don't know if it's because of the parting that she's doing with um, Egyptian guy and they need more money to invest in party goods, if you know what I mean. I don't know if it's because, like Rose Thorne suggested, she wants to invest in buying an air conditioner for his place because she can't handle the hot weather. I'm the exact opposite of her. I The slightest cold and I can't cope. I need to have heaters, even in the spring, even in autumn. I'm very full on like that. So maybe that's what she's doing. In any case, it is as obvious as day that he's unemployed. She communicates with him at 4 p.m. during the afternoon. He rang her the next day at 9 a.m. If he's supposed to be at work, how is he calling her? It was during the week. I think I heard her say he's self-employed, but I don't know. I could be wrong. Certainly, I, it just doesn't sound very promising when it comes to his uh, employment status. So I think... That's why he accepted the fact that she had left a rain 
of phone calls and text messages on his phone because if it was me and somebody had done that to me, even if I had known them for a year and somebody had left more than 30 uh, text and 30 calls on my phone in the one night, I would have had strong Norman Bates vibes coming my way and I would have said, oh, okay, you know what? See you later. Norman Bates or not, it would have put me off that somebody so immature, so demanding, so self-absorbed that they don't care about how I'm feeling on the night and if I want to catch up with my friends or I need a break from them, but they're demanding attention to the point where she went over his place and was banging on his doors. I don't know. To me, that's all too much. I really got pissed off with her when I saw her do it. I felt uncomfortable, cringe factor, and I felt embarrassed for her. Um, She was also aware, obviously, that it was she was saying that it was wrong. Oh, you know, you probably think I'm insane now. Oh, no. Um, And the next day, she said, I feel so bad. And even now, until now, she's saying that. But at the same time, she can't control herself. She goes into these impulses where she's freaking out so badly, where she needs to know where he is. Is he with another woman? Dude, you have to know you can't force anyone to have romantic feelings for you, to be in love with you, to stay committed to you or anything like that. Life is ever changeable. Every day changes. And you've got to mature up, smarten up to deal with the fact that a guy might walk out of your life at any given moment because nothing is permanent in this world. Nothing. And you've got to understand that. And unless you do, you're in big trouble. Um... So, yeah, I don't know if she will ever be able to gather this. She's saying that she's um, understanding boundaries now. How how today, one day after the way you reacted, when you drove, I don't know how long it takes to go from her place to his. I assume it's more than an hour from the information I gather from other viewers and what other YouTubers are saying. Yeah, you're driving more than an hour in the night to just go to his place and look through the windows to see if there is another woman there. Like, yeah, that's not cool. After you've dated him for only two weeks, man, that's just, I don't know. I, yeah, I was so angry with her, really, to see what she was doing. And as much as I dislike this guy, as much as he sounds obnoxious AF, I still... I still felt so bad for him and not only has he been doxxed because she can't keep secrets to herself and she drew a sketch of him, she also um, giggly and laughingly spinning the phone around, gave his first name away, he's getting doxxed by people now, he had to put his Facebook accounts on private but if the number one thing in his mind right now is the substances, nothing else matters. So he decides to keep going with Chantel and to forgive her for what she's done. And if he's a power hungry guy, you know, like abusers and narcissists and psychopaths are, like my ex was, the one that I've referred to, whom I was seeing when I was about 20 or 21. Yep, he would be very happy that somebody is obsessing over him. Because a normal person, I can tell you, is going to get completely disgusted if someone was to leave um, an X number of text messages on the other person's phone or to call them more than 30 times in a night. So imagine at the end of the live stream, she had reached 30 phone calls and she admitted that she made a number more. Wow, luck for me, I would have been fuming if I had seen that many phone calls from somebody and they would just put me off I would not see them as a, a mature person who is attractive all of a sudden they would have fallen in my eyes as a weakling who can't be in control of themselves or of their thoughts or their feelings ill but um he Egyptian guy is in need of financial support in need of somebody to help him with his substances and she's in need of having a guy there 24-7. So this unhealthy relationship, unfortunately, has been founded on some very um, questionable roots, hasn't it? Uh, I don't even know if I can call them roots because roots are deep. And whereas these people, I don't know what they're building there. 
exchange on honestly he's a guy who is not going to be stable who's mostly in a state of altered perception altered reality what are you going looking for in this guy do you think he's going to be able to fall in love with you when a lot of his emotions and thoughts are numbed and altered from the substance use and anyway in any given normal person no one is going to be able to fall in love with you just like that in two to three weeks she's thinking that she's in a committed relationship with this guy oh you know we lie back together and we look into each other's eyes i want a romeo and juliet situation i don't see it ending very well there are going to be tears at the end of it um and simply because chantelle still continues to put guys on a pedestal and until you mature enough and you really think about humanity at a deep level and you realize that people are not worth that much worship you will continue to fall completely like deeply beyond even what is normal for people to the point where you end up breaking into a thousand pieces when the things go wrong so yeah she she needs to get away from idolizing humanity or certain guys because he she's from one perspective saying i hate humans they're so mean and he she is from another perspective investing emotionally and mentally and in every other way on a guy and making him be someone like i don't know brad pitt level in his appearance with a personality of an angel bad boy mixed in one a superhero a tragic hero i don't know i am sure that no matter what he threw in her way she would forgive him and find an excuse for even if he revealed a body in a freezer right now she would accept it because she's so fixated on him and she would justify it somehow she would say oh he was provoked he was only prov um you know um defending himself and protecting himself that's why he had to kill the person or even if she found out he was a serial killer and had raped and tortured girls, I'm sure that in her mind she would find some kind of justification. Oh, he was hurt. He came from a very hurt place in life and he just wanted to extract revenge on women. But he's come very far now. And after he met me, he's in a much better place. We are in love. So, yeah, at the end of it all, I, my suggestion and my conclusion is that she is exaggerating on things some people suggest that foodie beauty embellishes a lot to make yourself come across as edgy and cool and i i agree with that i really do too um so yeah um if she hasn't had that many relationships in her life to learn from or short fleeting encounters how would she know although from what she has narrated to us in the past she should have had enough of the uh, shorter term things or um, one night things or I don't know what but you know the, the kind of not serious situations to have learned by now so it's really we weird for me but she's also definitely at the same time uh, not just looking at generating views and money she is a very insecure person who loses it the moment she thinks she is not thought of as highly as she thinks of the guy and you can't expect your feelings to be reciprocated because the other person is not you you will be experiencing feelings for them according to your character your journey in life he is not obliged to feel the same in return he's not your siamese twin and he hasn't had the same dna genetic code being transmitted to him and the same life experiences so he can't be as madly in love with you as you are with them or if he is that's great but don't take it for granted that and demand that somebody absolutely feels the same for you or has to feel the same for you that's just totally bs and she needs to snap out of that she needs to respect both herself and others a lot more and i'm saying this even in regards to somebody as shady and shitty as egyptian guy because i really do think he's a horrible human being despite all the stuff that has gone down something that's certainly not embellished and i can't go past is how foodie beauty is so fixated on this loser of a man that 
she, this is the second time she has run over an animal and I simply can't get past that because you know the time in the past that she's gone driving late at night and um, eating in supposedly ghostly kind of haunted areas with pits and going through um, themed parks on Halloween and um, for long, long drives, she has never hurt an animal before. Why? Why all of a sudden has this become a problem? She's gone from hurting a bunny, from killing a bunny and leaving him there unattended, not even turning back to look, to now killing the second animal who was bigger. Soon it's going to escalate to a deer and next it's going to be a human. All because you can't concentrate on the road and your mind is on some kind of scagged out loser who is dependent on substances who's not even nice to you and gosh what can i say and because of the substances that they take together she can't even concentrate her body has got so many illnesses to deal with diabetes fatty liver and the junk food she has to metabolize and process but now her liver has got to metabolize and process the substances that they ingest inhale smoke and all sorts of things and on top of that they don't have enough sleep because they're up all night partying and having sex so who cares if we're gonna run at over animals and she went past it so quickly she's talking about it and saying oh i'm upset next minute she's giggling and talking about egyptian guy like really chantelle who the hell are you because i don't even recognize you anymore in the short time that i've known you you seem to have i don't know just developed into this horrible person but um you're i'll i'll leave it at that i've really spoken too much let's uh, <laughs> let's just um see what transpires next in Chantal's crazy world and i hope that it's something positive because i seriously was expecting her to come back with bruises all over her i would have expected her to be beaten up and that's another thing she's pushing limits of people she doesn't really know and if it's someone who's going to respond aggressively to what she is doing but constantly calling him call after call after call he could have just been somebody who would have really exploited and just belted the hell out of her i was considering that she's not even going to make it out of there i love i was really concerned for her life today i thought are we going to hear back from her or is he going to like totally murder her tonight and just lose his cool and just be done with her anyway guys regardless of the monetary or whatever support she's giving him or the obsession and idolization worshipping of him that she has exhibited so far anyway catch you in the next episode